everybody here at Villa Verde. Um, so as you can see, we have no chimney here now. So this last week has been taking down this, putting in the steels. Um, we have had a bit of a change of things. So originally that was supposed to only be the chimney taken out of this ground floor. However, the steel obviously cost quite a lot of money and then when we were speaking to the builders these last two weeks, we spoke about maybe taking it out of the first floor as well. So we're going to take it out of the first floor to give that room up there more space. There's no point showing you at the moment because it's not actually happened upstairs. Um, and we're going to have to keep the chimney on this side because we're using this bedroom as a bathroom for the time being. But we are going to take it up again so that you make better space, use of the space here because the cost difference is hardly anything but actually it makes quite a big impact on the two rooms upstairs. But the other thing that has happened is we now have the placements of the windows and the door for the flat. So in case you don't remember, we are stood in the one bedroom flat at the moment. So as you can see before, the, the room was to here because that was the chimney on the other side, whereas now it's made this whole room a lot bigger and it will come to around about here. So all of that bit that you're stood in is going to be the kitchen lounge diner. really nice size bedroom and even better size kitchen lounge diner as well. It's been really nice and big. And obviously lots of lights still because we've got two windows. This door obviously has glass at the top so you get light coming in through the top. And then we've gone for a big door and it's going to be three quarters glazed. So we're trying to get as much light in here because this is actually probably the darker side of the property. So yeah, the more glass we can get in, the better on this bit. And the other thing that's happened is the room, the bedroom over there that needs to change the door to a door and window combination, they've taken that out and they've bricked it up. So I will show you that now, but it's not very much to see, but. Okay, so it's easier to show you from here because on the outside it's got a blockade, so you can't really see it from there. But as you can see before, it had two doors, two patio doors, and actually for a tenant to live in here, we need it to be a door, so it, it's an escape, um, but also a window so that they can have ventilation without having a security issue. Um, but it means that they've got a, their own back door to the garden, so that's a really nice feature really for them. Um, so yeah, that's everything in this room. We're going to take you upstairs to uh, the kitchen for HMO2 just to talk through the design that we've come up with for there. Okay, so this is the kitchen for HMO2. And sometimes, you, when you're designing things like kitchens and things, you think about it, you think about it, you can't come up with a solution and actually sometimes if you just come away from it for a couple of days and then come back, suddenly the idea hits you. And so in here, we were really struggling about how to get all the um, cupboard spaces and all the amenities because if you remember, this is having to be enough for eight people temporarily and then when we go and do the attic upstairs, it will come back to, doing, to being for six people. But obviously we'll leave all the extra amenities in here, there's no point taking it out. So, it's always been big enough for six. Trying to get it big enough for eight seemed to be a bit more problematic. So we were having units all along that wall, tower units all along here, and units all along there, and it just wasn't fitting. We put a little island in the middle, um, but actually the walk around between those units and those units and the, and the island seemed to be a bit tight in places. So, we didn't know what to do, and eventually, came up with a plan that actually we have an L shape of units there along those walls and then as we had before the tower units along there so that's the three fridge freezers and then one tower unit here with two single ovens in it so that meets the requirements for the eight people there and then the clever bit is here we're going to come with a like a like an island, but it's stuck to this wall, so it comes out to quite far, I think it's 2.1 metres we've decided in the end, and it's double depth. So on this side we've got the sink and the dishwasher, and then a couple of uh, cupboard units. On this side we've got two cupboard units, so that's for another two tenants, and then here on the end we've got a nice little um, breakfast barn bit, for enough for about two um, bar stalls. Obviously we don't need it to be um, 
we don't need dining space because we're going to have dining space next door in the lounge diner so it's not something that we desperately needed however breakfast bars always look quite cool um, it's always nice to have a, if you're here you might want to have someone talking whilst you're cooking, you know, because tenants get along quite often and you know it's quite nice to be social and things. And it means that we can get all of the units in. And one of the things, one of my pet hates in kitchens is corner units, because they're just a faff and they don't make the best use of space and they're always really awkward to get into and things. And so with this design, we've only got one corner unit in that corner. So that's made me really happy <laughs> because yeah, I just wherever I can I get rid of corner units. Um so yeah, that's our kitchen plan at the moment. Um We've put it through to our, our kitchen designer in Howden's and she's run up the, um, the plans and the photos and things. So I think Ollie might be able to add them into this video so you can have a look. Um, but yeah, so that's where we're at for this episode and we will join you again in two weeks. Time. <laughs>